I am sure you will reduce some confusion which is created by my friend. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for inviting me uh, to this conference. It's an honor to be here. Uh, Dr. Goda has asked me um, to tell a little bit about the, the regulatory environment in Europe. And um, I'm going to talk about uh, the future in the regulatory environment of Europe. There is a new regulation coming into force rather soon. And um, I'm talking a little bit about the impacts and plans. So the current uh, situation in Europe uh, is all the countries are working under a, a clinical directive, uh, the directive from 2001 at the moment. However, um, as this is only a directive, uh, the countries had quite some flexibility when they have written this directive into the laws. That means there is quite some inconsistency. So each country has its own approval, submission and approval process in the European Union. This has led to the uh, situation that between 2006 and 2013 approximately 30 percent uh, less clinical trials have been conducted in the European Union because of this complexity uh, applying to each country individually. So the aim of this regulation now is to cons have a consistency across the European Union in all the countries. It ended the law in June 2014. However, uh, at the moment it is quite delayed, so the implementation is expected only in October 2018. These are the current timelines. So at the moment it seems to be a delay of about 13 months. So there are certain main areas of impact of this new regulation. Um, there are certain definitions which are modified and which will have an impact on the conduct of the clinical trials. Um, the major change is the new authorization process that will be a single regulatory and ethics committee submission. And in a couple of slides uh, there will be some more details about that which will lead to a, or is requiring a much stronger collaboration between the member states and also a new assessment reporting. There is a part one, a part two, and a common decision, a one common decision for the member states. There are lots of notification required during the conduct of the study and all have to be in a timely manner. Um, there is an increased consistency of safety reporting, which means an expansion of the Utah vigilance uh, database and the simplified annual reporting requirements. And there will be an increased transparency about study results. There, during the course of the studies, the reporting of the results need to be uh, much more uh, increased than it has to be done as of now. So, for the definitions, um, low inventional studies, um, the question is will these be considered as, uh, as uh, non-investigational studies, like observational studies? Will they become low inventional studies requiring a regulatory submission? So this could have an impact on many epidemiological studies. There are uh, currently assessments ongoing to assess the impact of those changes. For the auxiliary medicinal product, uh, it's also the question is if the safety reporting uh, needs to be managed like for non-investigational medicinal product, the submission the same. So need the guidance to be updated for the IMPDs. At the moment, there is no significant impact anticipated, but um, the assessment needs to be continued to have more clarity here. This is really the major change, um, the regulatory and uh, the ethics uh, submission. As I said before, at the moment each member state has to submit individually to the ethics committee, to the regulatory authority, and each member state issues the uh, approvals or requests for changes. Now this will be a single submission for all ethics and regulatory reviews in the European countries. It will be a two-part dossier. Part one basically is for regulatory application. Part two corresponds to the ethics application. 
everything will be prepared, submitted, reviewed and approved via an EU portal. And there are clear timelines which are stated in the regulation. And because it's a regulation, um, these timelines have to be followed very clearly. Uh, there, is, there is no deviation from it. Uh, it's about 60 to 105 days for the um, application. And if there are amendments to the application, the timelines are 50 to 75 days. So how this needs to be implemented, that is currently being discussed with the EMA, the European Medicine Agency. Because this changes very much uh, the approach of, of clinical trials in all the countries, all the systems uh, needs to be ready to uh, support these changes. And also the roles and the responsibility for managing the, uh, port the EU portal need to be clearly defined and managed. So uh, what does it mean uh, in practice? Um, timelines are at the moment quite individual. There are countries which have uh, quite quickly their approval. So the timelines will not be quicker for all countries. For some countries, they will be longer until they get the first pr approval in the European Union. But overall, uh, the, the final European uh, Union approval will be much quicker than it is it now. So just one example um, for the first country that, that will certainly have a longer approval now with the regulation. Um, Austria has, for example, a silent approval. If you don't hear for 30 days from the regulatory authority, your study is approved and you can start. This will change because we have heard before uh, it's a longer process now. In case of questions, and this is very important, uh, sponsors of, of a trial, whoever it is, have only 12 calendar days to respond to those questions during this application process. And um, 12 days, 12 calendar days, not working days, is not really much. So the question is, can a protocol be amended and resubmitted in such a short time frame if this is requested by the authorities? There are also no overlapping amendments possible. So you can uh, combine modifications uh, into one submission, but um, you cannot submit to a EU member state when an approval is pending from the same member state. So you have to have a clear country, site and protocol strategy to combine your changes effectively. And uh, something which is also important, um, the EMA provides the guidance, but the decision is still made with the member state. So harmonization of the opinion between the member states cannot be guaranteed. Reporting requirements. Um, there are many reporting, uh, many notifications now required within the EU portal. Most of them uh, within 15 days, like when the study has started, when the first patient is enrolled, when the end of recruitment is reached, the end of the trial is reached for each country in the European Union and for the overall trial. In case of serious breaches and urgent safety measurements, uh, the timelines are shorter than these 15 days. That means a, a robust process for communication is required to meet these timelines and to ensure that all these steps are being followed. And um, it's advisable to build some prompts into the systems um, in order not to miss anything. Also, it's uh, important uh, to define a process um, for the sponsors. Who is uh, responsible for making these updates? For safety reporting, um, it's at the moment assumed that the impact will not be that much. Um, it's, um, there will be some changes uh, to the process for SUSA and periodic reporting and an expansion of the ultra vigilance system, which is uh, more frequently used then. Um, overall, it's assumed that there will be a simplification of the reporting process uh, compared to the current situation. And uh, very important as well, the increased transparency. So during the course of the study, uh, gradually um, information needs to be released. Um, and in addition, oops, that was too quick. 
Uh, and in addition, um, submissions and publication of inspection reports need to be um, provided. That's covered in the next slide. So um, at, the start of the at the start of the study, when at the time of the approval, protocol information needs to be released in the portal. But uh, not only protocol information, there is more like inform uh, information about the informed consents and so on. Um, for example, 12 months after the end of trial, uh, the result data have to be released. Uh, in case of uh, pediatric trials, uh, the timeline is shorter, it's six months. Um, and uh, overall uh, information is to be released 30 days after the decision on the marketing application. So there is quite a lot of reporting to be done during the course of the study in the future. Uh, inspection report publication, that's something which uh, is increasing the transparency as well. So all site sponsor and uh, CRO inspection reports which are relating to European Union studies will be published on the EU database. Um, the EU competent authorities will post and publish their own reports and sponsors must post inspection reports from uh, authorities outside of the European Union. So these will also be published in the database. That means that the much greater visibility on the quality issues at the sites, at the sponsors, at the managing CROs of a trial, and uh, this, the responsibility of CROs and sponsors will be absolutely evident. Everything is posted. And um, there's some reduction uh, possible, but only in relation to personal information to um, protect uh, the data uh, confidentiality. So when this regulation will come into force, uh, there will be a 12 months transition period. So there is no sudden switch from the directive that we are currently following to the regulation. And uh, during this transition period, sponsor can, sponsors can decide uh, what they want to follow, the directive or the regulation, which means there is a parallel process for about 12 months. And um, in the transition, the studies can proceed in accordance with the directive for about 36 months, but after then every trial needs to go into the regulation and not following the directive any longer. So the next couple of slides, um, I'm not going into too much detail. Um, these are showing a little bit how this uh, uh, submission and approval step uh, is going to be done. So I mentioned already there is a part two and a part uh, two part uh, um, submission process. A part one is the general, which is basically corresponding to the regulatory uh, application. That means the study is assessed. Um, the therapeutic and public health benefit aspects will be assessed. Risks and inconvenience for the subjects. Um, everything about uh, re related to the uh, study medication, the manufacturing, importation the labeling of the study medication, the investigator's brochure. That's under part one. Part two of the dossier uh, basically corresponds uh, to the national application. This is basically the ethics committee application. And this is related to the informed consents, compensation uh, arrangements, recruitment arrangements, data protection rules, the suitability of the study sites and the study stuff damage compensation and biological samples. So this, this is one dossier basically of two parts and submitted via the EU portal to the AMA. The next slide is a pretty busy slide. I'm not going into too much detail, but within this portal, um, the approval process will be handled. Or the, not only the approval process, the review process and everything will be handled via this, this portal. Either the studies will be accepted or not accepted, that's the end then. And uh, the release of the, the uh, conduct of the clinical trial will also be via the portal. There was one more, I thought. No, okay, it's gone. Doesn't matter. So that's basically already the last slide. Um, if there is m more information uh, that you would like to see, you can go to the um, European Commission uh, web page, that's the link, and uh, there is more information about these upcoming changes. So, thank you very much.
Thank you very much.